All right, last lesson we left off by looking at the concept of bandwidth, and specifically bandwidth for SSB voice. Today we're gonna to look at the bandwidth for CW, as well as some other stuff which we're gonna to get to later. So the bandwidth for CW, I wanna actually explore this while looking at some individual test questions. And the reason for this is because I have a special trick for you to get through these questions on the Hammer Radio exam. So I'm gonna put this up on the screen. This question asks, what is the appro approximate maximum bandwidth required to transmit a CW signal? And again, CW means Morse code, continuous wave. Choices are A, 2.4 kilohertz, B, 150 hertz, C, 1000 hertz, which is really one kilohertz, and D, 15 kilohertz. So I'm gonna tell you the answer right now. The answer to this question is B, 150 hertz is the approximate bandwidth required to transmit a Morse code signal. So as we learned in the last video, which hopefully you remember, CW or Morse code takes up a very small amount of space on the air. So its bandwidth is very small because the only information it needs to transmit are little beeps. So here's a trick for this question. Looking at the answer choices, we see that B has the smallest bandwidth, 150 hertz. B is the smallest choice. The smallest choice for the mode that has the smallest bandwidth. Just remember that, you'll be golden on the test. And this trick also applies to one more question I wanna go over. Which of the following 500, 1000, 2400, or 5000 hertz, which of those is an appropriate receive filter bandwidth to select in order to minimize noise and interference for CW reception? The answer is again, the smallest bandwidth choice on the list, 500 hertz. Again, the smallest choice for the mode with the smallest bandwidth. You can narrow down your receiver's bandwidth to about 400 or 500 hertz when you're receiving CW signals. And what this does is this narrows down again, the amount of signals and noise your receiver picks up allowing you to hear only the CW signal you're listening to in the middle here and not other interfering CW signals that are out here on nearby frequencies. Those are all blocked out. We don't want them. We only want these guys. So it's really great to have a receive filter bandwidth. So receive bandwidth. Um, the, uh, there's an advantage, as you may have guessed by now, to having multiple different receive bandwidth choices on a multi-mode radio. In other words, when you're receiving signals, you can choose it to receive this bandwidth or that bandwidth or that bandwidth or any bandwidth you want. And the advantage to that is it reduces in noise and interference by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. So if you're listening to CW, you can have a narrow bandwidth, only hear that narrow CW signal and block out everything else. Voice mode, make the bandwidth a little bigger so you can hear the whole voice of the person you're talking to while still blocking out all the other voices. By being able to change that bandwidth, um, it's, it's really great. Um, you see, if you only had one bandwidth, like say you only had a 2400 hertz receiver bandwidth, that'd be great for SSB, but then if you go to CW, you have this huge bandwidth and one CW signal in the middle and maybe other CW signals all mixed in in the mess and you're all hearing all of them at once and it's hard to receive. And that's why you wanna be able to shrink that bandwidth down so you only hear one CW signal, block everything else out. That's why we have multiple receive bandwidth choices. And if you have any good, decent HF radio, you're gonna have a little knob that lets you specifically narrow the bandwidth to almost whatever you want within a certain range. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about sensitivity. Did I write that on the board? No, that's okay. The ability of a receiver to detect the signal is sensitivity. So think about it this way. In order to be able to hear and detect a tiny weak signal on the air, a radio receiver must be very sensitive, which is why the answer is sensitivity. Um, the ability of a receiver to detect a signal is sensitivity because it has to be sensitive. All right. Now I want to talk about a mixer, and these are all devices that could you could get asked about on your ham radio exam. A mixer is used to convert frequencies to other frequencies. If you have a frequency that's, I don't know, 21 megahertz, and you want it to be 28 megahertz, maybe you use a mixer to convert it to 28 megahertz. Um, why is this device called a mixer? That doesn't seem to make much sense at first. But um, let's go into the way a mixer works. The mixer works by taking the radio signal you want to convert, so the 21 megahertz signal, and it combines it with another signal of a different frequency, like a, maybe a higher frequency, maybe, uh, I don't know, 50 megahertz? I'm just making numbers up here. But the mixer then mixes the two frequency signals together, which creates a new signal with the frequency you want. Um, the book you have has a little diagram which further clarifies how a mixer converts radio signals to different frequencies. But basically, by mixing them together, the frequency changes um, through that mixing, and that's how it converts frequencies. That's one way to convert frequencies to another frequency. You can also use a transverter, which I do have on the screen. Oops. Sorry about that. A transverter transverts signals to another frequency. It converts it to another band, or it transverts it. 
All right, now we're going to talk about another word you need to know, which is called selectivity. Selectivity. And selectivity is the ability of a receiver to discriminate between multiple signals. So say again, there's multiple CW signals all in the band at once. And when a receiver is discriminating between different signals, saying, I'm going to listen to this, I'm not going to listen to this guy, it's selecting one frequency to listen to and rejecting all the other signals and frequencies. In other words, it's discriminating or selecting between signals. So the ability of a receiver to discriminate is selectivity. Remember that for the exam. Okay. Now we're going to talk about something else, which um, not only is on the test, but you should just know it in general, because you're definitely going to run into it if you're serious about ham radio. And that's the automatic gain control, or the AGC, the automatic gain control, also known as the automatic volume controller. What the AGC does is it keeps your received audio relatively constant. So AGC is basically an automatic volume control. In fact, that's what people used to call it. And here's why you need it. Um, you might be going on your ham radio and there's nothing but static. Static's usually pretty quiet, probably, so you, your radio will just be like, you know, pff, you know, not making that much noise. All of a sudden, your radio picks up a very strong, loud signal. Now, if there's no automatic volume control and you've, you've been listening, you turn the volume up because there's nothing but static and you were listening to static and all of a sudden this loud voice comes on the air, you're going to blow your ears out. That's where AGC comes in. So when there's, a, when there's nothing on the bands and all you're listening to is quiet static, AGC turns the volume up because you can't hear anything. When a very loud signal comes on the air, AGC quickly turns the volume back down so that you won't blow your ears out and become deaf. It then turns it back up again when the loud signal stops. So in other words, the AGC tries to keep the volume at a relatively constant level. Instead of going from static, quiet, to uh, man's voice loud and back again, it's, it's always kind of at a constant level because the AGC is always adjusting so that the volume is constant. All right, so we just have a few more things to cover. And one of those is a pre-amplifier, which you're probably also going to, you might run into it on the test and in real life. So what is a pre-amplifier? A pre-amplifier a preamplifier takes the incoming radio signal from your antenna and it amplifies it before you get to your receiver. So there are two types of amplifiers. There's an amplifier which usually is amplifying your signal when you're transmitting to make your signal stronger. A preamplifier works on the receive side. It takes the incoming radio signal from your antenna that you're receiving and it amplifies it for your receiver so that you can receive it better. And it, this all happens before it hits the receiver, which is why it's called the pre-amplifier. Because as we all know, the prefix pre means before. Um, because the pre-amplifier does all its work before the signal reaches your radio and your receiver, the preamp must be installed in between the antenna and the receiver. Um, another thing to note here, power amplifiers have a mode switch on them. They might have, you can switch it to CW or SSB or FM, and this is just so you can set it up for proper operation in the chosen mode, which makes sense. And that could be on your test. It is on the test as of 2018 and will be until 2022. All right, so just a few more things I want to talk about. The ham radio exam has recently added a ton of questions on digital modes. And... Um, Actually, I don't know why this isn't in the digital mode section, but oh well. Uh, this does fall under the category of multi-mode radio. The first thing I want to talk about is DMR. This is called, this stands for digital mode radio. And the official explanation answer in the exam is kind of technical. Uh, I'll read it for you anyway. It's, quote, a technique for time multiplexing two digital voice signals on a single 12.5 kilohertz repeater channel. Uh, in plain English, DMR uses technology that lets multiple signals share the same channel or like a frequency all at once. So it lets multiple people share the same channel at once and talk at once without interfering with each other. They can share the same channel. Whereas normally on ham radio, only one person can talk on a frequency at a time because if you have multiple people doing it, you're going to get interference and people are talking over each other and it's a huge mess. With DMR, multiple groups can talk on a single frequency at once and the users of one group will not be able to hear the users of the other group. And these, these groups that I'm talking about where they can only hear each other and not the other people sharing the frequency, they're known as talk groups in DMR. And to join a talk group on DMR, you just enter the talk group's ID number into your radio keypad, again, using um, DTMF, which is the tones that you use when you're pressing those buttons to talk to the repeater. All right, and there's one more kind of um, digital mode that's in here that I want to talk about, and it's called Broadband hamnet. Broadband hamnet. That's broadband dash hamnet. And 
There's one question about this in the question poll. You may not even run into it, but you might. So I'm going to go over it. And basically, again, this question is kind of technical, so I'm going to simplify it for you. Just remember, broadband hamnet is a data network powered by ham radio. And this really narrows down the choices. If you look at the choices for this question in your Gordon West manual, only one of these options contains the words amateur radio and data network. So if you just remember this is a data network powered by ham radio, then you're good to go. You don't really need to know too much more about broadband hamnet unless you want to try it. I've personally never even tried a broadband hamnet and haven't heard of it until I uh, made this video. But anyway, it's on the exam now, so uh, it's something that you do need to know. And that concludes our section on multi-mode radio. And good news, there is no addendum for this section. In case you haven't noticed, I kind of tacked the addendum on in the middle of this video because I recorded this whole lecture just all over again in 2018 because it was uh, too much had changed since the last one. So there is no addendum. The addendum is part of the end of this video. So anyway, the point is now you can go study this section in the Gordon West Manual and take the quiz. And then you move on to section 14. I think that's on interference. So that'll be a lot of fun. Bye.